ladies and gentlemen, we just got done with that wondrous, wonderful sniper tourney. Let me put that music, beautiful music down. But we have a wonderful, what did you call him, uh, Lucinity? Ryan Bussey? Ryan Bussey, what is that? I wonder what that means. Uh, Ryan Bussey, uh, Ryan Noob, um, one of the best, if not the best, strategists in the, the wonderful Halo Infinite spectrum of competition. Uh, they, I believe they just placed fourth in the uh, last online LAN. are going to be in a very good seed in this upcoming, not LAN, sorry, uh, online uh, tournament. And now they're going to be seeded really well in this next LAN. So we're excited for them. Um, we're excited for him, uh, Descendant, Huss, and Precision as they're moving into the next level so we're gonna go ahead and get into the call with mr. Ryan Bussey <laughs> the Cinity's Ryan Bussey and we'll be good to go so we're jumping in and let me come up to the stage and Ryan right now it shows you're muted so let's go ahead and show that left screen How are you doing Ryan doing good doing good yeah of course let's uh let's put you on the oh I was gonna say let's put you on live cam but we don't know those crows they have to they don't they have to be taken care of before you go live right <laughs> just playing. but um how are you uh, how's everything doing how are y'all feeling from the um from the tournament y'all just played mm -hmm. perfect Awesome, awesome. And what's the journey that y'all have had? It's been uh, kind of different, right? Because it's, I wouldn't say it's a pickup team or anything, but um, did I know I, I can imagine that you expected it. I mean, even from the, uh, during one of the breaks, we put your E United kind of uh, breakdown video for going to Worlds. And you're like, you treat every game like it's the net, just another game because you don't want to come in, I guess, this is my take, is it from a psychological, you know, this is so important. This is, this is the finals or this is Worlds, right? Oh my God, oh my God. You come into every game, the the same Ryan Noob as you uh, as you did the last game is that is that correct? Yeah. Right, 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 one hundred percent. Go ahead and put me up here. Here's a huge crazy background. I'm gonna show you the left screen. I'm not lying. It's the wonderful. Ryan Noob, give me a second, everybody here. And Ryan, there's a lot of people in chat. If you want to, um, we could link his chat somebody, link him, uh, link his uh, Twitch to the chat, and please follow him. I know m many of y'all probably already do that, um, but he's really good to watch, especially um, from a VOD perspective. If you subscribe to him, you can automatically get access, maybe not to every VOD, but um, I don't know, Ryan, is it every VOD? Do you let everybody see every VOD from that? <laughs> at least five dollars right he's like five dollar prize yeah right five dollar prize yeah a hundred percent i think that's good i think i think your knowledge is is so now i wouldn't say different but it is so more uh understandable and digestible i think you've gotten it down to a science right if you want to look at it that way uh, you got it down to a science where people can see and understand why and what you do when you do it I mean when I watched y'all play against FaZe in the uh, tournament prior to the last one I felt like like uh, not that I knew what was gonna happen but like I knew what you were planning to try to do and like I felt the like I felt like I was in it sounds funny in y'all's body but like in the team right like I was moving with the team um, but it's, it looks like they say they can't hear me, by the way, but um, please let me know if you can't or you can, because on my screen it shows that you can. Um, but, um, like, you, your way of, can't hear Ryan. Okay, I got you, got you, got you, can't hear Ryan. Let me put Ryan a little bit louder. Uh, let's see, Ryan, talk real quick, just in case. Hello, hello is right. Okay, give me, all right, let's get Ryan. All right, one more time, one more time. We're going to go ahead and test that one more time. Give me one second. He's good? Oh, he's good? Sure, Fox Killer. And now I know y'all can hear him in here. We're talking about in the wondrous, wonderful um, uh, what's it called? Twitch. Let's put his thing real quick, by the way, into the Twitch stream here. Give me one second while we pan this out, and then we'll go ahead and do this. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah sometimes on stream it like cuts out. Yeah, everything was going fine. Audio output capture. Okay, cool. Put new, cool. 
All right, we're going to go ahead and try that real quick, Ryan. Still nothing. What's going on? Okay, give me one second. What is going on? What is happening here? Somebody in the chat, explain to me why this thing is going on. Is it because I'm tired? You are getting my tired, tired, tired vibes as well? Let's see. We'll try this one right here. Okay. Oh, you know what? We could do that. I think this would be it, actually. The Discord one. I'm going to do this. Give me one second, ladies and gentlemen, as we pan this out. Vicinity taught me this, by the way. <laughs> she, she taught me. If this works out, then she got it. She's the one that got me situated on this one right here. Okay, Chrome. Quick wheel. Discord. Okay. All right, let's see. Talk real quick. Huh? Right, let's see. I think that should be it. If not, pops up. Unhide all. Show me some love, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Help me. Okay. I think that should be it, but right now it's not. Let me know as soon as you can. Much. This time. Okay, cool. I think that should be it, honestly. Um, if it, if not, let me know, because we're 20 seconds behind on the stream. On the uh, on the the delay for that tournament that we just did. Yeah. Let's see, but uh, during this time we can set it up if you want. Um, to what you wanted to go over today, Ryan, you can kind of go over, um, a little bit, and and then I'll get this situated as it's going through. It, Okay. Right. Right, right. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So you want us to, we'll probably look at your screen and go over that guide stuff. It'll be a it'll be a good 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 little session. Okay, let's see. Your voice went crazy for a second. Did y'all hear him there? Talk again. Talking, talking, talking. Are oh, we there good? you are. He's live, everybody. Hey, we've there done he it. There he is. We did it. Let's see, with my heart rate that couldn't go up because of how tired <laughs> I am, <laughs> it's like it could go up, but it couldn't. Let's see. And we will answer questions. If you do have questions on the right panel, you can ask the people in Twitch. I have you too as well here. So we can have both. But um, we can, as soon as you share a screen to Mr. Ryan, we're good to go. All righty. All right. Yeah, if y'all want to say hi to Ryan, tell him. He sees your name. Okay. Just kidding. All right. Two, one, two, P, 60 FPS. Boom. Can we see that? Yes, we can. Yep. And uh, GameCoach.gg, by the way, is sponsoring our tournament next week. So we want to throw that into you so you could see that. Because I think this is a different one. Tech Maps. This is Tech Maps. So GameCoach.gg. Right. Okay. So game, like, that, I was looking for a new one, actually. Because Tech, Tech Maps doesn't have all the old stuff. Right. Right. Or all the new stuff. Sorry. Only has the old stuff. Yep. Um, but I'm, I'm used to using it. So we're going to stick with this for now. But Sounds next good. week. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Go ahead. All you now, my brother. Make this full screen. All right. So, yeah, cool. Um, glad to be here. So, here we're going to look at a Street Slayer that we had against Optic. We ended up winning 50 to 49. We're going to spoil the score right now because who cares about the score? We're here to learn. We're here to get better. And I'm here to, to practice, you know, teaching because um, the better, the more I do it, the more I talk with everyone else, you know, going into these Metify sessions, not only do I do it, you know, because it's fun to interact with everyone, but it helps me explain what's going through my head better to even my teammates. So, so we're going to go through attack maps real quick. Um, I've gone through a couple of things on past streams and past YouTube videos. Um, we're going to go through a, a quick five minute, maybe overlay of some of the things that I really focus on in the games. Um, the biggest thing I would say is that I draw an imaginary line through through basically the middle of every map and kind of use this line as a guide to how to play the map. And not necessarily how to play it, um, but to give you a guide of what's going through my head and what should be going through your head during these games. So 
for example, if I'm going to set up a map and cut it, like set up Streets Slayer and cut it in half 50 50, like there's a bunch of different ways to do it, right? We could cut it through the, through the middle and cut it through here. Um, but let's, let's, let's have some interaction here, Clutch. So, okay. what, how would you cut Streets down the middle? How would I cut streets down the middle? Like, if if you were to think back to how you play the game, what areas um, are easy to control for one side? Um, so if you think about it in lockout terms, right? So if you were, you, you would cut it, like, cut um, cut that map in the middle diagonally from, like, you, one team would have BR and, and window control, library control, and one team would have blue and snipe control, right? Right, correct. How would you do that in this map, per se? I mean, it, it makes sense to think about, and we could pull some people up here in a second too, but to have it to where, the, yeah, from B to cafe, I mean, you have A side and, and you have C side. I mean, you have a tower on A side technically, and then C side, you have an entire area that you can control a little bit better and sustain that a little bit better. But yeah, down the middle um, from top to bottom, according to this that you have. From right top here. to bottom. So so from this one. Yeah, that would be gotcha. that. For me, that would be halfway. Yeah, I should right? probably color code these. That is definitely one way. Um, the uh, way that I do it, let's let's uh, it's it's a good it's it's close, right? It's a close answer. It's not necessarily one of the two lines. I kind of get tricked you with this one. I would cut it diagonally, almost like this. Huh. Okay. But the idea is that when we're in a fifty-fifty game, it's really hard to control more space than this. As soon as you get to this red line the game gets really scary and really hard to play. So for example, like if you want to go to plants, if you if you're seaside and you have a setup that looks like this, if you get to plants, there's not really much that your team can do for you plants. And if you go to tires and your team is set up something like this, there's not much that your team can do for you tires. So it's it's a cool imaginary line to think of is like shit's about to go down as we get closer to this line got it that's different now oh sorry good i was saying that's different i mean i i i mean i can say i, I understand that but i've never <laughs> thought about it like that that's a that's a little nuance right there go ahead. yeah and 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 we'll we we'll talk about this more and i really like to start off with this because a lot of the times when we when we divide the maps up and it's not going to be the same for every every map um uh, or every even every game type, you know, when when an objective is in the game, it gets really you know it gets different. So, for example, if we were to play Live Fire Slayer, I would draw something like this, like an, a line through here, where we can get up to Mangler right without much pressure. If a team's holding a setup that looks like this, we can get up to Mangler without much pressure. But the second we start walking through top mid, you know, things get, start getting really really hard, and as we start pushing further and further. It becomes, you know, even even harder. But um, if we were to divide this up in a King of the Hill game, right? Like, let's say the hill color code this a little bit better. Uh, red teams get control of the hill. Ooh. We would divide the game up probably like this, where we can almost get to dummy ramp, but you know, it, it almost looks the same, but it's a little bit different, right? Um, so we kind of get to this line, and as we get to this line, we've got to start worrying about the game a little bit uh, in a little bit different of a manner. Um, let me try and make it a little bit more obvious. So let's say the hill is in C, and we, we have a setup that kind of looks something like this. So the hill is here. Our imaginary line that I would draw would be, let's go with this one for blue for some reason, huh. something like this, right? And if... If we just think of it like, you know, in between one side of the map and the objective, it's pretty easy to draw this line in our minds. But we're going over Street Slayer. I just wanted to give like a cursory look at the uh, different guides to playing different like objectives. Just a really quick look. But we're playing Slayer, so this one's pretty simple. We're just going to draw this line from here. Got it. Now... This is the standard, like, as you get close to this line, we've got to start getting ready to fight. Um, but one of the cool things that my team does, and basically a lot of the teams do, is to try and push that line as far back as we can 
um, you know, without taking big fights. So if we can, like, and, and this is what's detailed in our heads, if we want to use a common term in Halo, space. We ask that question of, what does space mean? Like, if I go get space for us, or if I, um, if the other team gave us space, what does that actually mean, right? And it, we would just, in, in my theory of how to play the game, we would just, like, change this line. So if I got space arcade side, and we're the tower team, we could now draw this line something like this. And suddenly we've got more space than our opponents. So much of what we do in our game is to try to get this space. You know, it, in, it's, not, it's not always this simple. There's definitely, like, a lot that goes into our game. And I would say about half the game, we just play Halo. Like, a lot of, a lot of the game, you're just kind of brawling it out and trying to get to these positions um, in our head that we've... Oh, shit, we've walked through this before. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of what we're going to look at is this idea of cutting a map in half and this idea of trying to take space in this game and what we do to, to do these things. Okay, sounds good. So in a way, are, are you saying it's Petey and Shoddy that splits the map more? So we're saying that Petey and Shoddy splits the map more. Um... Not necessarily more. So a lot of the times that... Um, how do I want to... Do you think you could rephrase this question for me, Coach? So in a way, are you saying it's Petey and Shadi? So she's thinking like, is that, are those the main areas that basically decide what is the middle of the map? So like, is that the middle of the map to you is probably what she's saying. Like, that is the middle from that point to the pd point in respect to what you're thinking about when you're playing strategically so like typically like i said the one that i said before from cafe to b for us that's the middle of the map like gotcha. like b right is technically the middle of the map if you're on the, P, uh, the pd side right but it's also the other side of the middle of the map if you're on like red gun side so i think she's kind yeah. of getting to that yeah, that's that's great. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. Um, yes, and also maybe no. So this this PD does prove close to the line, right? So we would can maybe consider that middle. Um, but I would still consider middle of the map uh, or like splitting the map, uh, being closer to the middle of the map. Um, th that was going. That's a great segue to the next part of my um, of this topic. Is that most of the time. I would probably say 80 to 90 percent of the time when we play the game, we're playing it on the extremities of the map. So we're, if we want to push this line back, um, or if we want to stop them from coming forward, we want to do it on the outsides of the map. Um, mostly because the inside of the map is really tough to play around. It's really tough to walk through walk through mid. I mean, I know Formal does it a lot because he's a, a psychopath and really good at the game, but. We try to play through the outsides of the map because the outsides is what gives us the space to to collapse inwards. So, um, in general, like yes, PD does kind of we do kind of split it off at PD in a way, but we use PD to get out to arcade to split it and like to to get that space. And we're gonna see that a lot in this game where we do our best to get our space, and our space is used like we. Or, Goodness gracious, talking in circles. We're, we're going to do our best to get space. And in order to do that, we're going to use many members of the team to try and to try and do that. Oh, God. Got All right. You got it. You en got it. Enough theory. Enough but uh, theory. yeah, it's, it's kind of the same thing. So let's, let's walk it through from the red, red team's point of view. So first off, like a lot of the times, we're going to try and get into a position that looks like this from the red team. We're gonna try and like try and make sure that no one is in number three spot here, and able to walk forward at any time. We're gonna try and make sure that no one's heaven, no one's in an awkward position, PD ready to push arcade. But in order to push this line backwards, we're gonna go through the purple side of the map because it's easy to get get space on the B the B side of the map, but it's really hard to push forward this direction. Okay. So we're gonna end up rotating and going up here so that the line 
kind of looks like something like this. Got it, got it. And then we might we might rotate back and you know do some more things. But the the big thing is is like we'll watch this imaginary line slowly and slowly get pushed further back. And I think in this game we'll actually watch Optic fail to push this line back and give us a crap ton of space because of it. Oh, All right, okay. that's enough. That's enough. Just overlook of the game. <laughs> we love it. Oh, enough okay. talking, no gameplay. All right, last question before we go for these guys. Ooh. Let's see. We got, how do you adapt your strategy if the enemy team is effectively, ho I guess we'll learn this in the game, effectively holding their line or pushing yours back? Are there specific signs you look for to change tactics? And then how far can you position yourself? This is all basically what we can learn by watching this game, I'm guessing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let me let me read over this. Yeah, it's a um, little chattery yeah, <laughs> on the side. If you open up yeah, on the top shade. right. Uh-oh, shades and fades. He's about to put Ooh, on. Ooh, shades. Let's oh, see what's up. All right. All right, so how do you affect, how do you adapt a strategy if the enemy is holding the line or pushing yours back? Um, that's kind of the game, right? Like, we, there's a couple of different stages to the game. There's, sometimes we're 50-50, some, like, probably half the game we're getting collapsed on and there's no real resetting. But uh, I would say probably 30 to 50% of the game we're going to get into a theoretical position that I've put up in this tack map just for us to like think about from a third person point of view. Um, how do we have, how do we adapt our strategy? I would say mostly we've got, I can't really say anything other than the simple, a lot of the times we double up and don't fight. Um, some people call it hiding. Uh, most, mostly I just say fight close range battles is the way that I would say it. Um, but our idea is to wait wait for our teammates to spawn by not giving up too much space, but also by doubling up. And then we'll watch it during the game, as, as Clutch is saying. But that's... We don't really... Uh, we're not really in the right situation right now to adapt our game because we're focusing on expanding our game. We're saying that we're not doing what we're doing as best as we could be doing it, and therefore we should be focusing on doing it the best that we can rather than adapting to other teams um, going sense. going forward. I like that. That's a good way to put it. All right. Let's How far... Uh, oh, that's another question. How far up can you put, position oh, yourself no, that, that doesn't force the enemy team behind you? Oh, my goodness. That's a great question. We got to go over that. Uh oh <laughs> Oh, my goodness. The, the, brain, right, the, so brain, the brain is moving. One more time. One more time. So one of the many things, like one one of the biggest things that we try to do on this team is to force one specific spawn. That's a really tough, hard thing to quantify in this game. But um, we'll see it a couple of times in this game where we will get a kill somewhere close to the imaginary line, which will let us push the imaginary line back to something like this. And we will make sure that we don't cross that line so that we can still force the spawn in C in this box. Wow. Somewhere in there. But the, um, basically, our idea here, and, and there's a bunch of different things that block spawns in this game. One of them is gunfire. So if you're shooting at someone in the box, it blocks the spawns in that box. So we try not to do that. You know, I'm not saying not to shoot your gun because sometimes people focus really hard on the strategy. But... Um, our idea is to get close, and if you notice in this situation, PD is open, so if we kill like number four, he dies in this spot. You notice that when he's about to spawn, we'll be in these positions, for example. It'll probably be something like this, actually. But the idea is that we don't want to shoot back C, we don't want to block back C, we don't want to get too close to this line, but we'll fight you know, number two if he comes out, we'll fight someone if he goes up B stairs. But the idea is we want him to spawn back here so that yeah. we have a major space advantage and then we usually win the team fight because of that. Yeah, you basically right. lock him down. That's great. Yeah. And I think a big thing people don't realize is uh, especially below Onyx, like even 1700, is that uh, gunfire stops those spawns. I, believe it or not, Ryan, I know you know this, like, <laughs> but like the back of your hand, but people don't realize that just shooting in an area will close that. But even looking in the area can close down that spawn a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, even looking, man. Sometimes, sometimes just looking over there will block it. Not, it's, you know, it used to be a lot more. I think with the BR it was a little, a little bit, bit different, different, and with the sniper, sniper for sure, sure it's different. different. Um, but we're gonna gloss over the starting strats. Sometimes you win them, sometimes you lose them. We did decidedly did not win that one. 
We have an enemy throwing. We spawn out. There's not really too much to talk about theoretically in this position. Um, again, this is one of those situation where, situations where we're just brawling it out for a little while, trying to get away with a camo. And we pause here. And if you look, we're kind of set up in a similar way. I haven't spawned yet, but we're kind of set up in a similar way to what we went over, right? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Starting to, <laughs> starting to work its way into what you were talking about. Exactly, and you just when you, if you use this idea, if you if you start to when you watch this, I've had people say that they've started to recognize it in their own games when they're starting to play. So it's like it's nice to say like, oh, we pause, and what do you know? Thirty seconds into the game, the situation pops up where um, it's kind of similar. Now we're again we're trying to get as much space as we can. Optic has decided to not push too far out. I don't remember. I don't know exactly what happened. I know we killed a lot of people over here. But yeah, dead zone. I think in general, we like our team in this situation will want to go out driveway and start working out there as fast as we can to try and get that red room control in a reasonable aspect. But they end up deciding to not move, which is a little bit awkward from their point of view. But we're just going to go over it from ours. So as you notice, we've gotten a crap ton of space. They do have four alive, so we're going to play this a little bit passively because we feel like they're about to hit out and we're not quite set up for our push. We're waiting a couple of seconds longer, we're waiting a couple of seconds longer. And then as we're about to get ready to push, they end up deciding to push right into our blender. Absolutely owning. But this is what I love about the positions that we, like, that we took up. We got, like, and it's not about, like, controlling an area yeah we're controlling driveway a little bit harder than any other aspect in the map but the idea is that we have that imaginary line that we drew in our heads that say we can't really go further than that and we've got to fight around it makes sense that makes sense so that's the fun part about this game that's crazy look at us and then yeah descendant goes up with a shot he gets a kill now here we make a little bit of a, an oopsie, Descendant dies a little bit too easily, we're about to win the fight. Now we killed three, I'm thinking this is the last guy in C, I'm going in and then I see them spawn right in front of me, that's a little frustrating. Um, and it, and again, I want to say this isn't frustrating on three like the spawn system or anything, this is frustrating on our part because we had a really good collapse set up. And we decided to mess it up by dying just a little bit too easily. Let's see, let's see if he dies a little too easily. Ah, uh, just a little, uh, just a little unlucky, a little unlucky. But yeah, then they triple spawn and C, and we collapse pretty badly. Pew. Not a lot of micro things going on in this. We'll we'll point out a couple of them. So as I'm G-sliding across, I'm trying not, like, just in case they do spawn in here, I'm not G-sliding in just so I don't die. Pretty much, like, um, the same thing that happened to Descendant, I don't want happening to me in this situation. I don't want to walk into uh, an area with multiple people and die faster than I probably should. So we'll watch as I G-slide, instead of going in, I'm going across. Just in case something bad like that happens, I'm ready to to get out but I get pretty lucky live just long enough and again in this situation when I peek I'm not peeking to do damage I'll do damage if it's if it's if it looks nice but I'm peeking just to see if like if I can fight if I can do something or for example if someone's right here staring at the smoke because he was in a battle I'm gonna shoot that guy but if if I'm not seeing someone that's not looking at me I'm gonna jiggle it and go back without even shooting my gun really there we go. Just really yeah, quick, really quick in like and out. It, yeah. it's, a, it's a good tool to use for sure. And then I just get absolutely owned. Dead zone. Incredible player. Unlucky. It's a great play out of Hust to then get some space. We're going to go back down to my point of view. Wow. Just gets a free kill on that guy. What a player. Yeah, we're going to try and show the setup one more time. And then we'll... Ooh, we're just going this time. We do get a couple of kills. We do try to chain it. Doesn't end up working out. There's a like nice hide or B steps that played it well. So right now, we're right now this is a great example of just brawl mode. Um, we've seen some theory. But a lot of the times, we're just, like, probably 
half the game or a little bit over half the game, we're just absolutely brawling it out. So we got a kill. We feel like we're in good positions to just go forward. A B-Steps guy is hiding, kills two of us. I'm not in a good position to back up, so I'm just going to continue going forward and hope for a kill. Pew, there we go. Yeah, it is two Ryans right now. It's singing to. Yeah, yeah, it's that's a weird, weird bug we got going on Discord. Hey, there's two. Of them. Look at that. Yeah. He's a robot. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. It's a robot, Ryan. So this is a fun situation. We we kind of lost the fight going into it, and so we pause. This this might be this is a fun. This is gonna be a fun question for you and for anyone in the chat to answer. Where did we go wrong? And I'm I'm gonna pause it before it absolutely goes wrong. But theoretically, just so it doesn't make the the question easy for us. But theoretically, so we we lost the fight before. We kind of slayed our way out a little bit. We got a couple of kills just to move out. But we're not in a good position to take a lot of space. So in this position, me and Precision are going arcade. So yeah, I'll, I'll show I'll show the three point of views, and I want someone to explain just a little bit of what went wrong, just you know, as a cursory look. Gotcha. All God, right. I keep using that word. It's like I learned the word. I, I I use the word randomly one time, and now I use it all the time. What is it? Cursory. Cursory. Yeah. All right, we're it's like a, a... Qu a quick look. It's like a quick look. Gotcha. Well, we got the we got the thing situated where um, you're not double heard. Hopefully the people in uh, in I I just muted you in the uh, s server, but not the stream, which is so weird. But um, nice. that fixed it. But let's see if anybody has an answer to that. Please let us know. All right, so we did. So we so we just looked over Precision's gameplay, my gameplay, and Huss's gameplay, and I would say that between the three of them, there was a small to medium sized mistake in those. Just from the theory that we went over a little bit ago. All right, let's see who got to answer. Does anybody have like a quick answer? Let's see, anybody could come up in chat. Please let us know if you if you got the answer. Um, I'll invite some people up. You can and we'll look at hand. it one more time. Gotcha. Yeah, you can raise your hand and, and have a chat. Um, but we'll take it just a quick third person point of view. Nice nade, right? <laughs> All right, there's the position. Anybody got an answer? About to learn. We're about to see what anybody got. So we got three, 13 people. Oh my God. Okay, <laughs> I didn't see that happening. Okay, like you, yeah, you can look on the right, right there, Ryan, and you got a couple of people. Let's see, starting from 906. Great matter. Okay, AI Ryan, Ryabot. <laughs> there we go. We got a couple of them. Perfect. <laughs> Too much space. Absolutely. So in this situation, because we lost the fight previously and because Descendant went down, we're looking for this the imaginary line that we drew up in this. Oops, it's doing white. I like white. So we're looking for this imaginary line. It's really, really hard to push past this imaginary line, right? Oh, cow, every, everyone's getting it now. Perfect. Yeah, we push past this imaginary space on purple side. Now, that's not always terrible. We've noticed that a couple of the times in this game already, we pushed past that imaginary line and we've gotten pretty far on it. But in this specific situation, when we when we pushed past that line, they were set up something like this, we, we took it too strong. We took it too um, casually, which is something that I think is really important when looking at your own gameplay when we get to this imaginary line that cuts through the middle of the map, we have to really clinch. We have to really be ready for a fight and know that like we either have to take the fight to the death or probably just not take it at all. I see. So so we'll watch in this situation as we're getting arcade control, which is, you know, not past that line that I drew. But Huss ends up misreading the situation a little bit because we did get a kill and he feels good about himself. But we don't have any space uh, else, like elsewhere on the map to justify this push out. So he walks out 
takes way too much damage, recognizes it, like, recognizes just a little late that it was bad, and gets away, but this is going to cause some problems for us, I'm assuming. Again, haven't watched this, so I don't know too much about it. Oh, what do you know? Formal just walks out and dies. Love that from him. Really appreciate that. Then we get a couple of kills, and this is where the fun, uh, like, of Halo comes in. It's like, no matter how much we talk about, like, what is good and what is bad, sometimes the bad plays end up being good, but I would say this is where the percentages come in and say, like, oh, this would probably hurt us in the long run. Like, if we ran the simulation a thousand times, like, we'd probably lose the situation 75% of the time because of this mistake from Hus. Although he makes up for it by hitting a good nade on ATM and a good spike on ATM. Yep, yeah, gets a one shot. Um, but yeah, so that's a fun little tidbit to go over. And you notice in this whole time I haven't moved away from Arcade. Nice. But this was a cool this was a cool um, push. So when we, we talked about it, and this might not have been like as succinct as perfect of an example, but when we talked about our push on here when we have this line we said we wanted to get something that looks like this uh, we might push 3b in one purple but we we generally in order to get this line back or in order to take our fights in the way that we want to we're going to push towards purple side so we're gonna go something like this and go towards purple and what that does is it pushes that line back this way um whether or not we were doing that for this reason in this spot or just to save Hus, unclear. But we'll notice how we have we end up having three guys front C all trying to push purple side in this situation. And it looks pretty good out of us. Gotcha. Is that and it goes to a question from Moro Sera. And thank you for the the gifted subs, Moro Sera. Appreciate the five or ten that you gifted. But she has the question, okay now I have a question. Do you have any good tips to determine when it's time to focus on map control? And it looks kinda like what you're doing right there. Y'all got a cure or two. And uh, y'all feel pretty good about yourself, like you said, and y'all move together as a team. Is that when you go for map control, or what's your idea on that? Yeah, so that's a great question. So in this situation, preferably, we'd want them all to spawn in one specific spot. That's not, that might not be what ends up happening, because camouflage is coming up, so we might put ourselves in the middle of the map and open up C spawns, or op like not push far enough and not block PD spawns. So I think in this position, just me guessing that we're not good enough in this spot because it is a high stress environment that we're not going to force very specific spawns because we get two we get three and right now we're chasing down the fourth guy now where are they going to spawn right now so we'll pause it and we're looking at like i think someone's going to spawn in the next second or two and this is a good guessing game for us is where and we'll pull it up in tack maps real quick where are they going to spawn and there is, I I want to say there's going to be one answer that is above all the rest of the answers. All right, we, we got a PD, this a is, red, this is gonna be, This is going to be a fun one. So let's right. let's bring this up in TAC maps. So we've got one cafe. We've got three of them dead. I'm dead. And our last two people are front C bench side. So easily looking at tack maps. Where is the other team going to spawn? What else? What else? We got any we more? We say PD or red, back C. Anybody from the Twitch chat can also bring that up. Give it a couple of seconds. This is what the academy is about. I think Ryan, you're a perfect. They say back A no problem or PD, but this is like exactly what the academy is about, right? Because a lot of people they play the game and. Uh, that's why I caught a r good reps with Ryan, right? <laughs> that's what I, I thought was a good idea. Because, I mean, there's a difference between good reps and bad reps, right? I mean, we can say we're getting reps in, we're playing the game, we're doing having a good time. We win a lot of games, we lose a lot of games. And maybe we win more, we lose more, depending on the day or week, psychology and all those things. But we want to have higher percentage plays, and you get that from higher percentage information in a way right so this is Love like that. knowing this kind of stuff is the uh is what an academy i guess idea is about because we want to know that we're progressing <laughs> in the game and this is exactly um what i think is is uh what causes that because we can just pretend like we're learning and getting those reps in but we need to know how to get good reps and i love this so keep on going i just want to throw that in there perfect all right so blue team red room for blue team so he thinks that blue team is going to spawn red room we, we have a couple of red rooms in there, PD, red room, or Baxi, which I think is the best answer out of death so far. Now, the answer 
and this was a trick question, um, uh -oh. just to just to mess with everyone and to show like where the mistake happened in this situation, is the answer is we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you're evil. Oh my god. <laughs> right? Because all of the spawns are open. So let's say like they could spawn anywhere in this white, like behind the white line. And that is not good for us because we don't know how to play the game anymore <laughs> in this situation. So again, number four is going back tower. If he ends up living for a couple seconds without taking damage, he can force a, a, a squad spawn here or a squad spawn in PD. Um, they could just spawn in PD because, but it's basically, it's randomized between where they can spawn. And this isn't great out of us. So in this situation, depending on whether or not we kill number four, the number four player top tower depends like that decides what we're going to do. So if we kill that player, we're just going to play confidently around the map and we'll figure the game out as it goes along. But the idea is that we kill them play probably, uh, let's draw a different line. We're going to probably play in this area of the map, which is, you know, generally the middle. And then when we figure out where they're, they're at, we're going to try and contain them. But the, yeah, the general idea is like, oh, we probably didn't play the situation as well as we could have. If I, if I won my 1v1 arcade instead of trading, it probably could have gone better. But yeah, so we don't get the kill top A. One guy now spawns PD. And again, as we go forward, two guys are about to spawn in a, another two seconds. Where are they going to spawn? Are they going to spawn in PD? And this one isn't, you know, everyone can have their own answers. But again, the answer is going to be, we don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. they could squad spawn in PD, but we're also pretty close and maybe blocking it. So they could spawn C behind us or Red Room or Arcade if the PD guy ends up going out caution and getting squad spawns in Arcade. This is a really awkward situation for us. So the best way to play this is to uh, use our camo and reset and figure out a different push for us to make rather than continuing to go back tower gotcha gotcha but we're hunting him we're hunting him we're hunting him we miss him oh my god <laughs> but yeah so we'll go back to their spawns just specifically because i think that's a really important uh focus in this game we want to end up spawning pd and then i think the third guy ends up spawning red room which again for what we're trying to do we want to force a specific spawn this was pretty not great out of us i would say so when this happens a lot in our games uh the main focus is to focus on yourself uh don't try to over help your team because when you when you go to over help your team you're gonna get like you're gonna give up space you're gonna get caught off guard there's so many bad things that can happen um when you're not in a theoretical position so we're gonna focus on playing ourselves so notice how i i go see i'm really checking myself really playing for myself like, I might shoot cross map a little bit, but I'm definitely just not going to help at all. Right, that makes sense. And this My is team goes down. To do that, to work on, like, what you had to do yourself. Because a lot of people think yeah. that they have to do that the whole game. I'm just going to play for myself. <laughs> but uh, there's times to do each and everything, so this is good. The map is cut hot dog. This is a bad 50, right? Um, In a way, it's, it's hard to hold positions that are like uh because great matter asked that question the map is cut in an awkward way for us so let's just take off the people but the map is cut in a position that looks like this and yeah it's really it's just really hard to play confidently in this in these situations there's no real correct way to play there's no theoretical um this situation doesn't pop up too often so it's hard to give you guys a good answer to like how to play this situation other than fight close range battles for the most part now let's go watch it and see if Huss and team fight close range battles oh we're just in trouble yeah i would say the biggest mistake here again we're over helping in a really awkward situation we should be waiting for the play to kind of figure itself out and fighting close range situations only. So we're gonna watch his descendant shoots a PD guy that's never gonna die and ends up dying because of that. And that's gonna snowball the situation pretty horribly. Now Precision has camo, does a good job of hiding. Duh. <laughs> now this is a fun, this is a fun situation for something that we talk about a lot is the timing of our kills. So two of our team goes down and I don't care how good the situation looks a lot, and I don't, 
I'm not expecting anyone to implement this. It's just a fun talking point for us. We're trying, like, especially if we have camo, to not get a kill right now. I'm trying to distract them a little bit just to, like, you know, hey, I'm over here. Haha, <laughs> look at me. Um, but because they, they know we have a camo guy and he could be lurking at anywhere. But the idea here is that we don't want to get a kill for the next, like, three to five seconds. The longer we take to get a kill, the better it is for us because we're coming off spawn, right? Like, the, the more our teammates who come off spawn can do. So I would prefer him for him to wait. Now, there's a push and pull of this. If you can get a back smack with camo, like, I can't, I can't stop you from doing that. But we'll watch in this situation as he doesn't get this kill. However, the longer he waits, the longer he waits, the longer he waits, the better this is for us. He gets a kill, and he gets help on the second guy. He gets distracted. And now we're, in a now we're four up against two players. And I think that's just, like, a cool, weird thing to talk about. That yeah, yeah. I would prefer you not to get a kill right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, don't rush. There's no need to rush anything if you have a team and you have a game plan. That's, that's good. Yeah. So this is a fun situation. So we're going to spawn them all C. So what we're going to do, since we got three kills, we're trying to get into that theoretical space situation where we want to push out as far as we can without blocking those C spawns. So let's see how fast we push out. I go down purple. My three teammates go tires. They go fa as fast as as far as they can. Find kill, like... This is a fantastic time for us to fight because any other teammates that are spawning, because of how far pushed up we are, will notice and instead of spawning, like one of their teammates spawn red room, but the rest of their teammates are spawning C, mm -hmm. which is absolutely fantastic because if we start a fight right now, those C guys aren't going to do anything. Gotcha. So we'll watch as we take a 3v2 on this side of the map and I've got the purple control so I can, I can kind of like look B steps um, and cut off the retreat as well. So we'll watch as we fight ice cream fantastic and now we're gonna take this fight to them once we get that free kill we should just be holding forward us goes down driveway i go down purple precision goes down b steps this is all fantastic from us precision finds the b steps kill we find the c kill i run away <laughs> sometimes you don't have to fight to the death them. right yeah and that was like a perfect rendition of the theoretical position that we're trying to hold uh a misstep in our opponent's understanding of how to play the game um f not necessarily that they're playing the game wrong but from how we tr prefer to play it in this situation again we're not peeking so for example if i'm dead zone i might hide in this p this corner or I, I might just hide here and play with my b steps guy but the idea is that we don't want to take any cross map damage we just want to play close range only so the fact that he pushes out so far and gets absolutely molly whopped here huh. uh really starts the snowball for the rest of his team yeah let's see it so yeah so we start start the push start the push but that was just such a cool like play from us we we had a really good understanding of what we wanted and what we can and can't do in the in that part of the game gotcha. so we kill three and again in this position we're going to try and do the same thing we want that guy probably we might make a different call in this game but we probably want that guy to spawn pd so if we bring up tack maps we brought it up for the imaginary line that we want to push in the in the sense that like in seaside so we don't want to push past like this area to still spawn them see but in this situation, we want that last guy to die, that died purple to spawn in PD. So we want to probably put the imaginary line there where we want to get a crap ton of control, but we don't want to block that PD spawn. We still want to, we still want that four spawner to spawn there. Mm. So let's see what we do. Oh, we get absolutely wrecked by an aid oh and that's going to change everything. I really like it. Yeah. Woo. Double naded. Wow. So there goes all of the theory out the window. Guy just throws two great nades, gets a kill, does a crap ton of damage, and now we're just going to be in shambles. Oh, fantastic. Oh, oh yes. Oh, hell yes. So this is great. So we kill a bunch of players. Descendant's about to go forward, like about to start like trying to fight people on the extremities. Maybe this guy or he goes tires again, doesn't want to push past that imaginary line too hard. But he's looking to fight, and then as soon as we like get absolutely destroyed, watch what he does. Boom! 
he ain't peeking. He's not telling it the other team where he's at. He's got two plasmonades. He's hunkered down. He's in he's in an absolute bunker right now. No one's able to push him easily. If if they end up pushing him, he's gonna take forever to die, which is gonna help us so so much when we come off spawn. So I love the decision from him. Now Hus, you know, he never got away from his situation, so it's still really, really awkward for him. But we're able to come off spawn, get into deep get in okay positions. And here we're just in a brawly point of view. Not really much that we can do. Gotcha, gotcha. So we're trying to just like stem the bleeding. We're trying not to like throw too hard. I end up getting good shots and making things really awkward. Again, no theory going on here. Just like, I hope it works out for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then it kind of does. Kind of own, kind of do a little bit of damage. But we'll try and get back into the, into the theory of things. Let's see if we can do it. So again, look, as like that imaginary line is right here. And my teammate almost thinks that he can push, but also at the same time is thinking, eh, that line's pretty pretty close. I've got to be really careful if I do want to push. So we wait for our teammates to come and push and set up a good one. Oh, nice, nice. I like that. But, you know, the other team I think makes the mistake. Look at this. Look at how anti space they are. Formal ends up hiding, which isn't the worst play. But with Lucid staying top nest, instead of Lucid going out driveway here and getting some space on the red room side, or at least trying to, or trying to set, like, uh, uh, like you don't necessarily have to go out to red room here, but we could sit driveway here where it's pretty hard for us to push him and wait for his team to get Mando and come up driveway and they can triple push up driveway. But instead we sit nest. And this is going to make it really awkward for his team because his team spawns up and they're all, look at them, they're all standing still. They're all giving up so much space on the map. So that's cool. That's a cool little tidbit. And look at that. We get an absolute free kill because of that. And they end up deciding to push. and get a really good timing on us. That's unfortunate. Come on, host, win it. Let's go. But yeah, theoretically, again, really good situation for us. But sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes they hit the B-stairs flank at the perfect time. Because again, if, if they hit it like like two like a second ago and then i find him but just because he finds me at the good time oh unlucky all right so we've done enough talking for a little bit we've talked we've kind of set this up nicely let's go to the chat see what, see what we've got in here gotcha let's see what they got would you say it's a bad idea to shoot at anchors that are positioned in hard to kill spots hmm so let's remember 420, so that's where we're at in the game. Because there's a situation that popped up earlier where we did that. Um, and we showed it on screen, but this is like Thank a you, cool Maddie. a cool tidbit. So when we killed them all, and we're, we ended up spawning them in this situation in, where two of them spawned PD, one guy's back A, one guy spawned Red Room. This is a situation where one of my teammates shoots at an anchor, and... It's really, really bad for us because we're just never going to kill that anchor guy, for example. So I'm not saying to not shoot at this guy, but let's focus on close range battles. So like maybe shoot at him a little bit, make it awkward for him to come out uh, PD to hollows and feel confident. But then let's go fight back tower because that's where the close route, like we want to fight close range battles for the most part in these games. My stick drift is crazy. I agree. All right. Um... When you look at VOD reviews after losing a game, what exactly do you look for in your VOD review? Um, mostly big shift changes, like uh, big shifts in the game. So in this situation, this is a good one where we kind of killed them all. We have camo and we pause and it's like, how did this situation go bad for us? Well, we could have forced PD spawns. We could have, Hus could have backed up, let them all force spawn PD and we could have set up that theoretical position for us and we chose not to. But then in this situation as well, instead of waiting and letting the camo guy do work, Descendant decides to, you know, shoot, take a shit ton of damage, and die. And, like, th this death is, like, uh, a huge swing in the game. We have them pretty, like, pretty hard trapped in PD. It's not a great situation for us, but it's pretty positive. And it's turned into, a, like, a horrible situation. So in these, when we look over VOD, like, this is probably the most important thing that we look at is big big swings because of uh, issues that we have in the game that we've talked about that we've worked on really hard and saying like, we've got to cut this out 
like what should be going through our head. Gotcha, gotcha. It seems like in old Halos that were not as fast, you would hold these lines for a long time and push the other team into smaller and smaller spawn. But in Infinite, it seems like you get the space, get a pick or two, then push the final kills and do the same thing in the opposite direction. Is there any truth to that? That's a good way to think about the, the, the way, if you want to copy and paste that in the chat. Um, I think, gnarly, that's a, that's a really good way to think about it. It's just, like, especially at the top level when you're able to do it so succinctly, so... It, like when you're able to do it in a group uh, that's well prepared it's doable but in more amateurish games it's kind of hard you know it, like it's that's a hard thing to do but yeah generally we want to keep uh we want to keep them in front of us because having to turn around in this game hurts so hard um for example let's just bring up a a, a quick push so if we accidentally split spawn one of them, and we're trying to push this direction, let's do this, and we split spawn in one and C, like it's really hard for us to push this with this angle cut off. And with the, with the ability for this guy to come up B stairs and flank this angle. So let's say like number three and number three fight each other. It's really hard for number three to play the game when he has to worry about his back. So we always, like, in in general, how we like to play the game is to have a line that keeps all of our enemies in front of us as best we can. It's not always that easy, but we're always looking the same direction. Whew, all right. All good, that's a lot. That's good, that's good. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, all right. All right, let's go... Let's go onwards. Onwards. I've answered some questions. 420. There we go. So again, we kind of like Lucid, we spawn top C. We're waiting a couple of seconds for our teammates. I'm making sure that our teammates are spawning in this situation. I'm listening to a call out. We end up killing the B-steps guy. But the idea here is probably to go out driveway. <laughs> so we end up going out driveway. Get a nice kill. Oh, so good out of us. Um, one of the big things that we do is like when we do, when we're in awkward positions like this, we do double up really hard. So we don't like wide peak. We don't jump and like stand still. We're going to go push it as a duo really hard. And doing that, we catch a lot of people kind of looking like that. Oh, yeah. Unlucky. Again, a really brawly area. We're just trying to focus on the good stuff. This is where Optic is probably at their best, um, which is frustrating to play against, is when we're in that brawly mood. You've got, like, just four players who are just fantastic at brawling. Would you say that in matchmaking it's kind of like that consistently? Just brawling and brawling and brawling and brawling. It can be. Right? It can be, but we can also do our best to, like, recognize the theory and trying to not, like, again, leave a spawn open for our opponents that they spawn in front of our team. Now, you know, it's, you've also got to do your best to recognize that that situation's not always going to happen. <laughs> and you, like, right, right. your teammates are going to block spawns that they shouldn't be blocking. But, you know, when it's our turn to make that decision, we've got to make it well, and make the game easy for our, our teammates. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh my God! You got all the nades today! Oh my God! Get away from me! Uh, Finally, they got you! Holy heck! Yeah, they did a great job in this situation. Of basically the same thing. Uh, we like to keep it in terms of C and PD a lot of the times, but a lot of the times we do force red room spawns. But they did a fantastic job. If we look at how they're set up, they've got Ivy. Let's back it up for a second. They have two guys plants. One guy top tower, kind of blocking cafe spawns. So they're forcing all of us red room, and they kind of have that same um, setup that we work for. So let's let's put four of us in red room and spando. They kind of have that same. Oh my goodness! Boom, boom, and boom. So the idea here is pretty much the same. They have an imaginary line that looks like this, 
and in this specific situation, they've made it so hard for us to play the game. Okay. No, but I think we do a good job not taking any damage. We're going to try and play as a team. Unfortunately, I just get absolutely owned by those nades on Mando. Da da. And then we, I, I don't think we fight out the best way that we could have. How would you a little get bit out of that? Days ago. What would you say? Um, so this is a great situation for Descendant and Precision to work together. So when they do push towards B side together, when they eventually push B side together, <laughs> it probably should be a little bit faster. Um, but I want them both to hit this spot and then both hit out PD. It's so hard for them to have a situation set up to where they, our team can't walk out arcade to planners to PD. So in this situation, we'd absolutely mollywop that guy and give a space on the right side of the map. So for example, Huss, when he was driveway a second ago, oh my goodness, I can't operate theater. When he was driveway a second ago, he gets to walk out driveway up and like stand here because we got control of plants. And it makes it a lot easier for us to play the game. But in this situation, we have stalker and we don't really play the best. Yep, kind of like that. Woohoo, we got a trade. <laughs> Right now, it looks like the score is tied, right? 38-38, is that correct? Yeah, 38-38, yeah. Okay. And in this situation, we come off spawn. Our teammates died at really awkward times, so I'm not... I'm trying my best not to get spotted, or not not necessarily get spot, not get spotted, but not trying to take any battles that aren't close range. So I'm focusing on hiding in PD, seeing if we spawn out. If we spawn out, we want to give our outside spawner time to... So this is fun. This is the exact situation we set up a second ago, where I said that... I. Player spawning here is really detrimental for the attacking team. So we're defending right now. We're trying to defend our, ourselves in PD. And we have an outside spawner. So let's see what happens here. Teammate plays a little slow, a little scared. But yeah, they just don't realize that we're there. And our, and dang it. So in this situation, I would beg my teammate to just run out front C. Because the like they know we're spawning PD. There's no chance that they turn their back and like try and kill Descendant, right? Right, like without knowing that he spawns here. Um, so he should be walking out front and like dealing with our front tower, because that would be just free damage on the front tower, make it really easiest for us to play the game. But he ends up not doing that, which is you know, it's it's hard to play against optic <laughs> I, I can't i can't imagine <laughs> yeah i know some of the people in the clutch academy have played them in the uh in the uh what's it called the opens and yeah. they said they had a great time <laughs> oh this is fantastic all right so when we are in very awkward positions like this our main goal is to fight close range battles only because close range battles we can we have the opportunity to finish a lot of times when we're last alive like this, we'll be like, oh, I'm walking up purple and I'm shooting back tower and I got back down and then Hetty kills me and it's like, oh no, what could I have done better in this situation? Well, if we just like really focus on fighting close range battles and like even if they're not the greatest close range battles, like you can, if you don't feel like you can get to cafe, if you just hide on shoddy box and wait and wait and wait for someone to be able to see you, which is like basically anywhere along this line, you can finish that battle a lot of the times. But Descendant's able to get up to Cafe here. And even though he's in a 1v2, because he doesn't peek, he's in able to get this kill, which just alleviates so much pressure from us. So that's a really good job from him. Yeah, some people would say maybe he died alone or he was too far up on the map, but he played it a certain way that made it an opportunity maker for y'all to work off of. If that's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, gotcha. And then right now we're in the brawling mode where there's not really much theory going on we're just kind of trying to stabilize try not to let them get camo that doesn't work out they're getting it they shoddy oh goodness how do we we're down three and they have camo shoddy how do we win this <laughs> looks like optic makes a little bit of a haphazard play their camo guys is this not... what happened to their camo guy oh lucid just gets oh uh Yeah, so they didn't wait for their camel guy to make plays. They also got a little unlucky. He got kept a couple of times. Very interesting. 
Interesting, interesting. I have no idea what's happening in this game. Like, there's no, like, I'm watching this, I'm like, uh, I can't talk about this. Like, Lucid's trying his best to stay alive, but, like, I don't know why his teammates were bottom purple, like, fighting so hard. They were trying to get out, but he, they were trying to save the camel guy, too. It's just all so hard to play. We end up losing a player, losing two players, I'm guessing, to the camel guy. No. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, you're doing your best. <laughs> I'm oh, doing my best. Right. So. Oh my god. Again, this is all brawling. As I said, like, probably half the game is theory and half the game is just this nonsense where I've kind of got to stop him from pushing into PD because my teammate's weak and then I got, I've got to smoke, so let's smoke myself out. My team's coming to save us and hopefully they catch people off guard, which they just get a double kill that's precision gameplay right there okay, three last down by two tower. right now yeah okay down by one right now three kills yeah one. brought it back oh no precision goes down and that should be the game for us but we end up getting a pick what is happening in this game <laughs> we played such a great game for a lot of it and then we just did that yeah gets baited that's a little bit unfortunate but a little bit of like you know exactly what we try not to do so if we're watching theater and saying like well what what went wrong like this game and that happens like that's probably what went wrong <laughs> that makes sense and then yeah, formal ends up going down it seems let's watch him go down Gets absolutely smashed. Probably should have gotten the kill. But shout out to Hus for winning a battle. And living. Woo! Two kills left. Two kills left. I get to Mando. Wow. And they run up B steps. We trap them B steps. Descendant hits the flank. Gets a kill on purple. Oh, yeah. I remember watching nice. this live. That was crazy. Yeah. And now this is... This is so fun because... Like... We do have this like this situation where we're spawning them. Where does that guy spawn, by the way? Cause didn't we kill formal? Where does formal spawn? Looks like he spawns Ivy, right? Yeah. So this is fun. Like, as aggressive as we are, like we've got so much of the map blocked that even though I'm Mando, he still spawns Ivy like right in front of me. Which is a fun, fun little tidbit about the game. Like, and I'm looking at our spawns. I'm pretty sure that's what's supposed to happen. They're looking at where we're blocking. Eh, PD's still open, so maybe maybe PD should be open. But yeah, um, again, theory-wise, like, I do get Mando control. But look at how awkwardly they're set up. They're set up in, like, past that point of them being able to be set up, right? right? 50, yeah. Yeah, the 50. They're past the 50. The dead zone's bottom purple taking taking some damage. You're get, getting spotted. And then, yeah, they're B-steps while... And again, um, we want to go back to Formal's death and say that because Formal died, again, let's bring this up, because Formal dies cafe, um, it means that the line then becomes something like this, or even, even more so like this. Got it. Right? So, so when they hide bench and they hide bottom B stairs, like they're so close to the line that they could die at any moment. So the best play for them to make if they're close to the line like this is just to hit it out. Definitely not to play it passively. Gotcha. And then I but, think Descendant makes a kill over there in the back. Yeah, so Descendant ends up hitting a good flank. We've done so much. Finds one. But yeah, it's really hard for them to find a kill on the B side of the map because they played it pretty passively. Gotcha, gotcha. You just took it like if they just that. Yeah, if, if they just walk up B stairs here... Um, as a duo, like if Lucid and Trippy to walk up B stairs here, they probably find one of us slipping. Right, right. But because because they like break off from each other, L Trippy wants to go up B stairs, Lucid wants to go back to C, they end up not getting a kill, alerting us to their presence, and we can play around the fact that they're B steps. And we, oh, do we play around the fact that, that they're so B steps crazy, here? Bro. Watching that on <laughs> live was insane. It was like, how are they all three there? What the hell? 
that's crazy. That's fun. Uh, we do have a uh, question from Tomorrow Sarah again. She goes, okay, that actually brought up a question for me. Say you're not in scrims, but in general, I think this was in regarding to like, uh, yeah, like in general versus playing with your team. Is there like one instant thing you choose to look at that determines playing for your team or playing for the map? Is there like a sign on the map? Is it like people that are down? Is it um, the amount of damage you put on the other team? Is it how many of your teammates are down or how far they're up the map? What's the what's the telltale sign? Maybe one or two that you think is uh, helpful. It doesn't have to be, of course, it's all theoretical because then you can get into brawling yeah. mode. But uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, that's fun. I would think that the main thing that we want to focus on, it, like the two, the two main things. So the one thing that I always want to focus on myself is spawns. I don't want to block the one spawn that I want my opponents to have. So if I see my teammates are pushing up really far, um, I will back up and make sure that they still spawn in front of us, right? But the the other thing is fight close range battles. Like really, like focus on fighting close range battles and fight them hard. Especially in like if we're trying to do better in matchmaking or like if we're not professional, basically, like that's probably the biggest thing to focus on is don't shoot like, um, doo -doo -doo. Let's, let's just put a camera on the map. So if we if we're walking from tires to pillars, let's not fight this direction. Right. So let's like if we want to, we can go to arcade and fight to arcade to red room and then red room. We can kind of clear and clear our B steps. And then we can start like clearing B steps and backing up to going down the driveway again and then collapsing with our team or something. But let's not go to like pillars and shoot to nest or go pillars and shoot Ivy because I want to help my team or I want to do my damage. But let's be really focused on fighting these close range battles. Let's go clear arcade. Let's go clear ice cream. Let's go clear out red room. So go make sure they're not coming up our driveway um, before we shoot anything cross map. So again, same thing in this position. Like we saw as our teammate... Uh, precision ends up fighting this this fight back tower right shooting this guy as soon as this guy's holding me i'm backing up and giving up that space and i'm waiting for my teammate to come and we're gonna go push this direction like so that purple is not like holding us but we can go fight close range so we can get to this corner turn and fight hard and they have to back up uh, and then wow. when they back up we can go clear all of our stuff but by fighting by long range, we really give ourselves the opportunity to die to some random nonsense that we're not prepared for. Got it, so, for example, in this situation, like, pretend this guy's not even here. So we back up, we get shot from cafe, we go onto, like, this spot. And then a lot of the times, someone just walks front tower and kills us. Like, just walks and just pops us for some reason. Like I, Like, I don't know why this angle is so sick. But boom, popped out laundry and they can't kill us anymore. Like the biggest focus, again, I just want to stress it so much, is that we want to focus on close range battles only. Got it. Like That's a big thing. Really focus on those because we've noticed how like most of all, most of the long range battles have been the mistakes that we make. Anytime that I've pointed out a mistake is like, oh, my teammate ended up fighting from age in to PD. Why would he do that? Why would he shoot that far, right? Instead, let's go fight back tower and fight the guy that is back tower. Yeah, I think Gnarly was bringing up a fact that uh, the Descendant got a piv on Lucid right here or something. That one basically opened uh, that up. It was Huss on this one. So Huss ends up piving formal. Okay, cool. cool. That's right. Yeah, that's right. yeah nice gotcha. reversal and then to it. save us in this game. Now, we still go on to lose a series. Optic are a great team. Uh, we outplaced them, ha ha ha. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so uh, that was a cool play to, to keep us in the series. It's awesome. Love it, love it. All right, cool, man. Any questions for everybody? Uh, uh, yeah, for last questions. Let's get it going. Let's go. What did you learn today? Maybe, maybe a thank you, but overall, what did you learn? What questions do you have about the 50 damage, things like that? I think Outcast had asked a question. He says, uh, you're still here outcast it says should people have a different mindset at all when bot reviewing mm or eights for example versus a scrim or tournament with the team and if so how they d how do they differ if somebody clip this um, would be good it's a good answer yeah here yeah that's that's an interesting one so when reviewing your own vod i would say most of the time and i'm i'm gonna keep harping on it like most of the time we shoot people who aren't gonna die shooting cross map rather than fighting close range battles. And I think that if we focus on that for the most part, I'm not saying never to shoot cross map. We'll watch as um, 
a lot of the times when I shoot, um, where was it? I can't remember where it was, but I ended up, like, I'm shooting people just to, like, shoot for a second, and then I back up. Like, I'm not saying to never shoot cross map or to only fight close range battles, but, like, I focus really hard on not planning my feet. So, in, in this situation, if I do want to peek purple with my team, I end up peeking it really quick. Peek, peek, and I'm out, right? Like, I'm not trying to take a fight. I'm not trying to, like, finish this fight. I just want to shoot my gun just to, like, have some presence. And then I run away, run, run, run. <laughs> but yeah, so I think that's the biggest thing, especially in matchmaking, is, like, really, like, if you're reviewing your own film, really count, and this is, I, I can still catch my teammates doing this, is, like, count how many times that you die because you don't fight the, the guy close to you. So, for example, on Aquarius, um, actually, let's bring it up on tech maps real quick. So in Aquarius, I catch my team doing this all the time. It's a fun one to to go over. So most of the time, like, let's say that they, they are the red team. They have some people sitting like this. We walk up P2. Let's say we're, like, in, fighting for their gen control. We walk up P2, and we might look down P Street and not see anyone. And then we'll go top mid and shoot our, like, try to shoot our gun to help our team as much as we can but then the worst thing imaginable happens <laughs> and they just walk up p2 and kill us and that is so detrimental for our team when you die in a position kind of like uh, this tack maps um it's it's like absolutely not detrimental if you just fight this p street guy and he backs up like this keeps so much space for us let's just draw an imaginary line so it's kind of like this right now. We have so much map control that the map kind of looks like this. The imaginary line kind of looks like this. Now, when we give that up, when we go top mid and try and help our team by shooting this direction, the line ends up becoming something like this because we just give up our P street. Huh. Now, I'm not saying, right? I'm not saying that we can't shoot this direction. Absolutely shoot it, but really focus hard on your close range battles. Now, honestly, like you could, like a big play that I like doing is even if I'm the solo guy P side, I'll walk, like I'll go cross top mid and shoot, but the whole time I'm not stopping because right. I really don't want to get flanked on this side. And I just quad push bridge and we just kind of just shove our way in there. But that's the, like the biggest thing I'm looking for is I don't want to die to close range battles because I'm too busy shooting cross map. Got it. So I'm too busy shooting people that I'm not currently fighting. So that P2 guy, like him staying in the on P2 is the play. Not necessarily the play. Again, it's real de uh, dependent on what's going on. But what yeah. what is the idea then? So is uh is that P2 guy supposed to stay maybe on that little brick thing right there, that little jump up that he could stand on, and then maybe shoot from there across the map and maybe look at P1 on the on their fridge side since they're all four over there. What's the idea that they should do as opposed to walking across and doing that four quad push that you're saying? It's so hard to give an exact answer for this. Like a lot of the times in these, in, especially in capture the flag, it's really hard to give a succinct answer. But I would say that it doesn't quite matter as long as we don't get caught shooting cross map. <laughs> this is so <laughs> silly. But like, honestly, like going into fridge, like let's say that this guy's like fire and you can kill him and get fridge control. And he like, I know spawns are going to be a little awkward. But if we can spawn them all four back flag and have an imaginary line that looks like that, right? Like if we can get set up to like this, like holy crap, are we set up for a good push? <laughs> um, which is why it's a fun test for us to do. It doesn't quite matter. Like in in the long run, mm -hmm. which way we go. Like, it doesn't matter if we double hit P or if we if we go for a base and, like, try to get up shrooms or something. Or if we go across car to car 3 to vent and we push that way. The, I, I would say, like, all of these plays are fine and viable. But what's not fine and viable is dying to a guy right next to you because you weren't fighting him. <laughs> God, like, God. Especially if you have position like that. You're at P2. Yeah. You're, like, up high. Okay. That, that makes sense. That's huge. Yeah. Sorry to keep harping on that. I no, just I want good. that. If we're to, if we're gonna take one thing away from this, 
don't die to a guy that is close range because you're focused on a long range battle. There you go, that's big. Clip it, clip it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%. Okay, that's good. And then if we go back to uh, one, like two or three last questions, then we can let Ryan uh, be home. Uh, and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably late for, late for you right now. It's 10 p.m. for a lot of us, uh, including myself. I'm Central Standard Time. Um, so, yeah, that VOD review question, thank you for that. Probably miss a lot of opportunity to actually help teammates, too, if you tunnel vision shooting across the map. How do you ha how do you have or what do you consider good timing holding a position or repositioning? And I guess that's kind of what he was saying right there. Yeah, yeah that's, a gr that's a great question, and I, I don't want to get too much into this, but to give us a quick answer to that, is I generally, unless I'm preparing for a close range battle, I'm generally not going to stop moving. Because when you stop moving, you give up those timings to get flanked. Like the longer you stop moving, the more like the more of a chance you have of getting flanked are. So this is a great one. Let's go back to this one. If we check our P Street, and the P Street's good, we poke this guy, he goes back. We don't quite know where the rest of them are. There could be a second guy getting ready to walk up P Street. So if I want to go through top mid to car like to fight, like to shoot this angle for a little bit, I have to be aware that they could come up P Street at any moment. So I'm generally just not going to stop moving. So I'm going to go top mid and I'm going to go car three without stopping. I'm just going to shoot to the best of my ability and then set up a push for my team on bridge side. Um, I think that this is a great live fire example. So when we make a play, so let's say that they are in a setup that looks something like this. And we're in a setup that we want to push the right side of the map. We want to push cut side. So let's say we do a 2A plot, 2 cuts push. Now, the weakness of this push is a flank. Or one of the weaknesses of this push is a flank. So these back green guys can flank this direction. So we're going to look this direction before we push, right? But if we want to go through top mid to C, then we're going to have to go, like, we're going to have to give up that flank. Now, how do you incorporate a push while not watching behind you? And my answer to that is to not stop moving. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're going to go through top mid and we're going to fight it out and we're going to do our best to continue to keep going forward. Um, and again, focusing on close range battles only. So um, I might pop top tower a little bit from, from a plat. But the second that like I'm able to, I'm going to cut through here and try and get around so that the top tower guy is just like not effective at go. all. Huge. But yeah, the, the general ideas that we have towards like what good timing is and good positioning is on... A situation like this is just to not stop moving and fight close range battles i think that'll help our game play out so much when we're like looking at these things oh my goodness i've been talking for so long yeah no we love <laughs> it uh, there's 50 people that are just like uh, eyes glued to their phones or um, locked in so they're learning so much probably today a lot of people were saying thank you and um i mean i learned a lot today i'm gonna re-watch this vod which we did pin to the channel you can watch the VOD later um this one does not require five dollars for Ryan's subscription. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but remember, guys, he has a lot of other content. I know he has his own a YouTube channel where he has the behind the curl series and stuff that uh, we recommend using. But we also recommend, of course, his Metify sessions um, that um, we can uh, go ahead and link here as well. If anybody can pull that, if not, I got it. I should be able to reach it in a couple of seconds. Um, <laughs> he does these sessions, of course, when he's getting ready for a tournament or things of that nature, his timing is very valuable and very time constricted as well. I mean, him making the time today was huge. So everybody in the chat, everybody in the Discord, uh, please say thank you and please again, follow him in the, uh, there you go, perfect, the Metify.right. I just, just did that right there. I'm gonna pin that to the stream. Um, make sure that y'all say thank you to him, of course, in the chat. Um, check that out, um, see what you'd like to do with Ryan if you wanna get a personal session or a team session. Um, Ryan, what do you what what do you have for um, everybody here in respect to that? Could you kind of give them a, a not a crazy breakdown because you've been breaking down everything <laughs> this whole time, but what 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 could they expect in maybe an individual as well as a uh, team session environment? Just a real quick one two minute go through for both if you want. Up to you. Yeah. So so for the Metify stuff, it's it's a lot of fun. It is um, 
it's an hour and a half of us talking about the theory. Basically, what we've done here, just on Street Slayer, on any game that, that you want, want we, we can. can um, but generally, we we talk over a little bit of theory, and then we go into the game and talk about like here's the times that you could have applied the theory. Or, I mean, it's basically that imaginary line concept just throughout the entire game and trying to get us um, focused on getting to that line and fighting close range battles, I think are the biggest things. Um, this is just a like a quick look at our games and it shows like what we're able to, to work on, what we're able to do in this top level. But um, when we're trying to climb up the ranks, when we're trying to go like get from that amateur scene to the pro scene, like being able to look at someone's game and not give those excuses that we love to give to ourselves. I, I hate going over my own gameplay because I, when I look over it, I'm like, ah, this is what I was thinking. But whenever I have someone looking over my own gameplay and they, they, they get to cut out my own excuses and say, this is unacceptable. And I'm like, you know what? You're fair. Fair enough. This is what I love, love about having a coach like Ash is on my team is he's able to keep, like, keep me honest with myself. And so that's uh, probably one of the biggest things that uh, that I bring, that I like bringing. Got you, got you. So if anybody has any, um, again, one last question probably, but outside of nothing crazy, <laughs> just a simple one. Again, thank yous and everything are yeah. great. But and, um, you go ahead, Ryan. And and thank you for, for having me. Uh, I really appreciate, uh, you know, doing this in a group setting instead of the normal one-on-one session. And uh and for what you're able to bring, I mean, shit, you got, you just got done hosting a a, a nice eight what thirty two player snipe, 40, snipe tournament yeah, like forty. Like yeah. Dang, dude, that's crazy. That's yeah. awesome. All, so, um, yeah, all thanks to everybody yeah. here. I mean, of course, you you're um, we advertise you as well is great. Um, having the seventy people watching you basically because there's thirteen in here. There was twenty at a point, and then there was seventy. Actually, there was a hundred people watching you at one point. <laughs> um, on top of that, Lucinity putting her time in. Fake one of our graphic designers, and then David, uh, or he's actually in the chat below. So a graphic designer and Sarvana, everybody putting in the time and effort today. I mean, huh, Ryan, it's been seven hours. I've been streaming <laughs> for seven hours, and um, like ha I'm not half alive because um. I'm all up on some energy drink, but uh, outside of that, it was it was great having you, man. I know everybody learned a lot. There's a lot of comments. People are saying that they're learning a lot, and and actually, like they say, thank you in the chat. You can see that. Thank you for your time, fam. As always, um, I'm sure people are gonna come to you and ask you um, for some help. And then, of course, um, whatever we can work out, you know, as a as a coach in here, we would love to have you as a consistent coach. Um, and then uh, maybe work something out so we could do this maybe monthly or bi-monthly or something that, um, yeah. that that fits the bill for you on your time and, and what everybody likes here. Of course, that that being said, these things are paid by the community. Um, of course, I paid them out of pocket up until maybe like, well, I still do pay them out of pocket. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do, actually. Um, but yes, the subscriptions, the bits, all those things uh, pay for things for uh, pay for this to be possible, make it more uh, accessible and that's the goal is to make it for everyone to be able to actually witness something like this and actually interact because i don't know when was the last time you got to interact with this many people outside of an event <laughs> ryan at one time right. and uh and actually get questions and answers you know i mean he's also a top like you said top uh top six easy top four right like he's a top four team man like think about that how close they he is to the pinnacle of, and we hope that they they win i actually hope that ryan's team wins uh, i'm betting on it because i feel like I've seen, uh, especially Descendant, and he, he coaches here as well, uh, grow so much in the small time that um, that they've been playing together. I mean, of course, they've been playing for time, but they like it's so awesome to see the growth even from tournament to tournament. Like y'all are like pushing phase and 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 optic to the limit, and um, I mean y'all making y'all y'all looking really good, man. And I'm, I'm hey, excited for y'all in this in this year. Hopefully, I can make it to Arlington and say what's up. Um, and uh, and then hang out for like the five seconds that you have available. Well, <laughs> so <to close> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll do, we'll yeah. do. And and hey, anytime, man, anytime. One hundred percent. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Ryan, for the follow. Yeah, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, and uh, if y'all clipped anything today, please let us know, and we'll we'll go ahead and share that. But outside of that, Ryan, any closing uh, statements that you got? Uh no, just thank like, just thank you and thank thank everyone for hanging out and asking great questions. It's what makes these uh a lot more fun is being able to interact with everyone. So appreciate that. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So Ryan, you have a blessed night. Have a wonderful night and uh be safe out there, man. Good luck. We got two weeks Thanks. to Arlington. It's gonna be a good time. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good one, everyone. Yes, sir. All right, let's go to the wondrous. Let's see. Base cam. 
if it even works for me right now. Clutch Academy face cam. I'm half alive. All right. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to pop that off. Cool. There it is, the face cam. Thank you so much for watching. We had a wonderful time with uh, the wonderful Ryan Noob. I mean, this is the first time he's been here. Um, I'm excited. It's only two weeks from now. Arlington, if you haven't already gotten your tickets and you haven't already um, checked out who's going, we have an area in the Clutch Academy where we uh, actually have people where they, uh, they're they saying they're interested. It says in the events. But uh, if it said going, about 20 of them are going. So uh, if I can make it to Arlington, I'll meet all of y'all there as well, which would be huge. Um, also, we wanted to bring up the fact that I don't think Super CC's here, but um, we don't have the graphic for it yet. Let's see if he's even in the chat. No, he's not in the chat. Okay. So if Super CC's here, um, I wanted to say one thing. We actually are sending him to Arlington. So he's technically a Clutch Academy player um, for Arlington in the FFA. So um, we sent him there, and um, we hope the opportunity presents itself where he wins this. Um, we have the areas in the Clutch Academy, such as the. Give me one second. I'll show you before y'all leave because I know everybody's tired. Um, I'm kind of not tired because of the, the, you know, the wonderful e energy drinks, you know, the energy drinks. Um, they help so much. But um, let's see. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, going on the left side. And this is new for everybody that is watching. Before you leave, check it out. Um, we have, obviously, this tournament section. We move this up so people can see it. So we maneuver the areas of the Clutch Academy accordingly to what is going on, right? So cool. That's that area. Halo Tractor here. Cool, cool, cool. Staff stuff. You don't see that. Clutch Academy. Cool. Coaches, Teams Corner. This is like Super CCs here. These are some of the coaches here and their areas to train you. This is where you would actually be with your um, your coach and talking about um, what you would like. So we're going to probably add a Ryan Noob area if um, people would like that. This is the Gladiator FFA, right? So we go in there. This is and it also has MM. So there's ranked MM here, but the Gladiator FFA is essentially the area where you have eight players FFAing against, uh, based off your rank, of course, you can go up a little bit, like a, a few points if you win and lose, but you go up a little bit inside the FFA, but you could play people like we have Birdie, which is Homie Hopper Shadow, uh, Wookie, all the Junars here, Miss Loveless, and Surpassable Zesty, and here's Super CC. He was playing earlier. He's getting ready to win this tournament, and that's what we're doing here. So if you want to play some sweaty matches, or you just want to play some free for all and get your gun skill better and your brain. Uh, level um, ready to go you can come in here and learn from the best including super CC again he's part of the team um, and whatnot you just go to the queue lobby and you queue in there and then um, you'll be good to go Let's see what we got so close that for y'all um, the queue lobby all you would have to do is join queue right here that's the little button you do join queue and you're good to go and then you just come in here the queue lobby glad your FFA and then it'll put you into a, into a, a game, give you FFA 1, 2, 3, 4 through 8, wherever you spawn it. Shades and Fades is ready to play. He's ready to rumble. He said, Clutch is half alive. It's time to take him out. So we got the everyone eights right here. Of course, everybody's getting to sleep, but join the eights queue here too as well. Everybody joins in here and has a good time to play some eights. Turbo Sniper, they just played this a while ago, 729 during the tournament. See, t simple teams, it weighs them out. We've talked about this many times before. Here's those divisions we're talking about, legendary, champs division, elite division, majors division, core, core division, things like that. And we have those every, every day, basically, especially Fridays, the Friday night lights. This is our last bit that I'm going to tell you event. Um, and these, this is something different specifically, but we're going to have these bi-weekly and we're making that with uh, uh, Resolute Gray, making a specific schedule because we need to maneuver these to do uh, bi-weekly sessions. Warlord Wednesday will be bi-weekly as well. The original Halo League, we're going to have Straight Sick in there doing that bi-weekly as well. We're trying to make it to where it's accessible to everybody. But the Friday Night Lights, um, I know uh, John Eric from Orchid Gaming does a similar version of this. We have this every Friday where we get an MVP clip, and if we get the best clip um, from you, we will give you $10 um, to um, you know use it, uh, Microsoft points, whatever you want. Um, and then here's that meetup in HTS, 17. And we got the Clutch Forge play testing. If you're a forger, we could we play test. We had this shy way thing that we're gonna do monthly, uh, and then we're good to go. So that's a lot of things we have in the Clutch Academy. We're just gonna pan out some of that to make sure it's real smooth and real nice. But I hope everybody enjoyed everything today. I hope everybody learned a lot today. I hope everybody um, felt like yeah, super CC on yeah, uh, learned a ton, learned a ton today. Sarvana, you did amazing. Lucinity, y'all did like 10 out of 10 work. 
um, your first time, Sar, Sar and then Lucinity uh, is your second time doing amazing. I mean, if y'all have any questions for me, let me know. You can Discord chat me. You can Discord, you know, uh, call me. Uh, let us know on Twitter, on X, right? Um, what you think, who you want in the future. We will bring who you want. We had Lunchbox before. We have Ryan Noob today, you know. If you want somebody specific, go to their channel, you know, even if you want to get a Royal 2 in here or a Frosty. I can't do that because they don't have an ability on a, on a monetary standpoint, but in a um, in a community standpoint you can probably kind of push the envelope a little bit and ask them and we can have them live here which would be freaking awesome uh, for somebody that doesn't do it without the community outreach aspect so if y'all have that um, yeah we can we get Ryan and Sparty boxing I could probably get Ryan uh, Sparty in here uh, have a couple sessions with him that we got to make up for probably after the um, the tournament but um, without further ado if y'all have any closing things for me outside of thank you um, I uh, have a good night, I guess. So please let me know. We're going to go ahead and, uh, outside of Sparty Boxing, we're going to go ahead and do one last thing. Where are we going? Oh, are you on the face cam? It wasn't even on me. It was on something else. Oh, yeah, Nye Day Quill, by the way, won the, um, the uh, what's it called? Um, it wasn't even on me the whole time. I thought I was talking to me. See how faded I am? Nye Day Quill won the... Um, the Space Station Gaming uh, shirt, uh, jersey, as well as Quick Fuse also won the Overnight Oats. So please send us your information if, and we could get that situated. We are going to um, go ahead and send y'all to somebody. If you have anybody in mind, please leave it in the chat. Please let us know who you're looking at, who you want us to go ahead and raid. We have 47 people. I know a lot of y'all are, are trying to probably go to sleep, but if you're staying up, we can raid a channel. Um, we have a couple of people. We have, let's see, two, 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 two. Anybody in the chat? Let's see. I'm looking at y'all. We got Arlington Prep from Acid MX from Mexico. Um, Con Dulce. Who do we got? We saw it's GG. Thank you. Thank you. ATL. Ogre 2. You want to get Ogre 2 in here? Imagine getting Ogre 2 in the Clutch Academy. That is crazy. Um, Gunplexion. Um, we got Ogre 2. Gunplexion. Barcode. We have, uh, out of those three so far, yeah, Complexion, Ogre 2, and Barcode. Let's see what y'all say. Ooh, and Renegade, and Renegade. Who do y'all want? Gunplexion. Okay, we did that one last time, I think. So let's see. We'll, we'll got to see. Let's let's rate Ogre 2. Okay, only because Kalar Moopy. Is Kalar on? Wasn't Kalar supposed to play today? Where's Kalar at? We might actually do that, by the way. We'll do that, actually. Where's Kalar? Kalar. Is she even on? It doesn't show her on. There it is. She's playing Overwatch 2. All right. We're going to send everybody to Kalar Moopy. But she's playing Overwatch. People in here, uh, I'll send it to her. Okay, okay. Just say hello. Hopefully stay. If you like Overwatch, watch the Overwatch stream. Um, we can send y'all to her. She's super funny. Uh, super good time. Um, post funny things. So we'll go ahead and uh, send you to Miss Kalar. I hope everybody has a blessed night. Um, hope to see you next week for the next tourney that we're going to do. Um, Sarvana, got you, girl. Um, again, follow for more. Go to the YouTube channel. I think I linked it. The Metafies above. Go to YouTube Clutch Academy. I think it's youtube.com slash Clutch Academy 1. Um, and you can get access to this VOD in the future, including the tournament. Um, so thank you, Listen. Vicinity. Thank you, Sarvana. Thank you, Ryan Noob. And thank you for everybody joining us today for this seven hour stream of consistent, heavy hitting, badass content that you won't find anywhere else. We're trying to bring you the best of the best. We're not trying to start at first gear or second gear. We're trying to go to fifth gear mock speed, if you know what that means, and take it to the next level. So you not only learn, but you grow as an individual and have a great time while doing it in a community that cares about you and cares about the community as well. So. It's a lot to say, but uh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, and um, I'm going to go ahead and send this raid. Let's get ready to Miss Kalar Moopy, and we'll pull the logo intro so we end with a nice little um, thingy, and uh, I'll send y'all in three, well, let's let the, leg the logo roll. Two, and here we go. L logo roll now.